Prince Harry is due in court this week, although he didn't turn up on Monday, for his trial against the newspapers for alleged unlawful information gathering used by journalists. So, as promised, I'll come back to you now to talk to you about the stories that are going to come up in this trial. But just as a word, please forgive me if I look over to the side, because I do reference news articles and things like that. I don't have a teleprompter in front or behind the camera, because that's not how I do things. And I don't script things, much to the disbelief of our friends at YouTube when they invited me to their headquarters in London. I don't take weeks scripting my videos and things like that. I, for one, I don't have the time. Two, they come out far too quickly to do so. And it's just much more natural to me to just talk to you as a barrister and as a business person and an individual for that matter. So I will reference the news stories as I go along. So some of the stories are going to include those, of course, when Prince Harry was very young. One of them, as reported by the BBC, um, going way back to 1996, uh, from the 16th of September, when the Daily Mirror reported Diana so sad on Harry's big day. This was all about how reportedly little time that Princess Diana uh, spent with Harry on his birthday. The story reporting that she spent only 20 minutes with him on his 12th birthday, which was weeks after their divorce. Uh, the Mirror saying that uh, Prince Harry was believed to be taking the royal divorce very badly. Now, just for context, all of this is obviously a very personal matter for Prince Harry. So whether you love him or hate him, this is obviously going to be very personal to him. And if these stories hit the press and some of those details that emerged could only have been discovered if somebody had access to very personal information, you can probably understand why Prince Harry is taking this very personally. Now, there's a, a very difficult and competing argument here, because on the one hand, I've said in many previous videos, and I repeatedly tell clients on a daily basis, don't pursue a claim if it is purely for personal and principal reasons. Because even if you win, i.e. you win the argument of your claim and any damages and even any costs, you may not feel like you've won after all, because it may feel like a Pyrrhic victory, being one that you've won in principle, but you don't really feel like you've won anything. And so this may well be one of those cases where Harry is pursuing this out of pure principle, that it is wrong, and it may well be wrong, and... If this really is the case, that this information has been gathered unlawfully, then Harry may well have a point, and many people may have Harry to thank if he uncovers some great unjust information gathering technique, hacking and gathering this information unlawfully, and jump to the fairness for many other people if this is the way things have been done and it turns out to be wrong. However, let's look further at the rest of the stories. Uh, Mirror Group Newspapers is expected to argue that both of these examples and the information in the public domain already, um, not reasonably private or simply trivial, um, this is as reported by the BBC, um, whereas lawyers for Harry are going to say that these stories can be linked to records of payments made, by, made to private investigators. So that is but the first of these stories uh, that is due to come out in this trial here. Um, the second of the group of stories are going to relate, obviously, to Harry's days at school at Eton. Obviously a very prestige school here in England. Um, one of the stories that Prince Harry says that unlawful intrusion following him around, quite literally, on the playing fields of Eton. Two stories in particular uh, discussing sporting injuries where the Daily Mirror apparently reported in November 2000 that Harry had a minor operation to his arm after a football related injury at Eton. Uh, going into specific detail about what the doctors had said um, given that he was 16 years old. 11 months later in the Sunday Mirror reporting in a story headlined Rugger Off Harry play on words and uh, obviously uh, wording there. The doctors had ordered him to stop playing rugby because of a back injury. And uh, again, reportedly, both of these stories uh, included what appeared to be private medical information 
Um, but according to the trial documents, Mirror Group newspapers team look set to argue that these details were either provided by the palace or essentially public knowledge at the school. Now, again, there's competing arguments here. Is it public knowledge? Was it out in the public domain already? Or were they private? Now, typically, medical information is private. And especially in um, family cases that I've worked on, this sort of information is very much private. But given that who he is, it is arguable that this may have been public knowledge because many other people may have leaked this information already. And once, to coin a phrase, the cat is out of the bag, if it's public information, then it's not necessarily obtained unlawfully. So if the newspapers had this information already and reported on it, then it wasn't illegally gathered, which is obviously going to be the heart of the matter at this case. Other stories, unsurprisingly, are going to involve family matters, and some 33 stories cover what's termed as internal family affairs. One of which, uh, from the people that I mentioned in a previous video, from December 2003, detailing arguments between Harry and William over the behaviour and the actions taken by the former butler of the late Princess Diana, Paul Burrell, who I've also mentioned on previous videos. And at around the time, Paul Burrell being accused of selling stories about Princess Diana, the people suggested that Harry and William had fallen out over what to do and Harry being furious with William about this argument, about all these stories leaking or being sold or one way or another. And Harry reportedly having been quoted as privately branding the butler as being a two-faced SH expletive. Court documents, on the other hand, showing Mirror Group arguing that while some of the information may have been private, there was an overwhelming public interest in reporting it and that the source was legitimate. So a combination of arguments there. On the one hand, it being a public interest defense as to showing this information. And on the other hand, having a legitimate source for some of the information, meaning that that shouldn't be wrong after all. Other stories going into Harry's teenage years. Some of the trial focus may well be on stories about Harry drinking and obviously drugs, especially considering his memoirs in spare. Now, many of the comments to my videos and comments generally in the newspapers arguing that Harry may well be cross-examined extensively on the contents of his autobiography, going into his drug use and countermanding that against his allegations against the newspaper and their information gathering, will cut across potentially the stories by the Sunday Mirror from January 2002, reporting that the then Prince Charles, now King Charles of course, having given Harry a stern warning for using cannabis. Going into the next day, hitting headlines in the Daily Mirror. Around about which time Harry was 17 years old and reportedly very fed up and cheesed off, to quote the phrase, that he was now being chaperoned by the then Prince Charles. Again, Mirror Group newspapers expected to argue that this was in the public interest and that they had a variety of legitimate different routes and sources available to them thus making the story legitimate and that Harry has no comeback and legal argument against it. Other stories with no surprise that this trial might be looking at are those to do with Harry's girlfriends. For example, Chelsea Davy, who again I've mentioned in previous videos dating back to 2008, where a large chunk of articles involve Harry's private life. For example, the Daily Mirror reporting Harry is a Chelsea fan, again play on words, uh, reported in November 2004. And again, unsurprisingly, the arguments from Harry's lawyers are undoubtedly going to go on many occasions that paparazzi photographers could only have found out where they were with the help of, they say, illegal intrusion. They say that the circumstantial evidence that both their mobile phones were targeted by journalists and listening to their voicemails. And these, as I say, just some of the stories that are likely to come up in this trial if indeed Harry does turn up because he was expected to turn up today at the day of recording and hasn't done so. Uh, but he may have expected to only have be needed to give evidence tomorrow being Tuesday, which is when this video probably goes out by now. But the judge did direct that Harry and other witnesses should be turning up the day before they are expected to give evidence 
in case the court gets ahead of when they are expected to do so, so as not to waste court time. But if that is the case, by the time the court day ends, then there may well be sanctions, because the court might be in a position to issue sanctions if court time is wasted. And these are things that might be explained in an upcoming video by our own Alan Robertshaw over on Art, Media and Law, linked in the description below, so please make sure you head over there, show that channel some love and subscribe, watch Alan's video if he has come up with that video by the time of releasing this video. I know he's recording it this evening, so the timing may overlap somewhat, but as and when you might be watching it, it will probably be linked in the description and in the pinned comments. So make sure you head over and wait for that video to arrive there. And of course, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell because that's how you get new notifications for channels on this video and probably on all of our others because that's how YouTube works. If you interact, you comment, you like, you subscribe, you ring that notification bell and that's how YouTube hits you up with updates, on this case by me and our Alan Robertshaw. In the meantime, I thank you for watching and spending your time with me on this channel and I will see you next time.